Shalom Israel. This is Brother Quadash from One Nation, One Power out here in Northern Arizona. And I want to give all glory and honor to the Most High Ahaya, Bahashem Yeshaya, Ruach Quadash. <clears throat> and I want to come to you tonight with another lesson, with another message to give you more understanding. And the message tonight is on the old covenant to the new covenant. On the old covenant and to the new covenant. Okay. And I'm going to explain what the old covenant was and the new covenant is. Okay. Because there's a lot of people out there that are still stuck in the old covenant. You hear me? Okay, and we need to open our eyes and come to the new covenant, okay, which is in Christ. All right, so the first scripture I'm going to go to, the first scripture I'm going to go to is Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. And I'm going to start at verse 7. <clears throat> this is Hebrews chapter 8. And verse seven, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Because obviously our, our forefathers, they didn't keep the covenant. They went into sin when you read the Old Testament. Okay, so this lined it up for the new covenant. All right, our sisters, our brothers and sisters, and the our forefathers, they got divorced by the Most High. Okay, so now verse eight says, "For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah." Okay, this is the new covenant. We are not we are no longer in the old covenant. Verse 9. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. Okay, so that's one thing we got to understand. That is this new covenant is not going to be according to the old covenant. It's going to be different. Okay? This is, it's going to be completely different. All right. Because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, says the Lord. Okay. That's why they had to get a new covenant because they didn't keep it. All right. Verse 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. So this is the new covenant, y'all. Pay attention. I will put my laws into their minds. Okay. So let's understand this. The new covenant is going to put the laws into our minds. Right? That's what it says. And write them in their hearts. So we're going to write them in our hearts. Right? And I will be... To them a God, and they shall be my people. Okay, so this is the new covenant. All right, <clears throat> he's gonna write them in our minds and in our hearts. Okay, this is why you have to have the Holy Spirit. Okay, because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, you will still think that you have to look at those old pieces of stone that have the Ten Commandments on. All right, you will still go into the cardinal ordinances. Excuse me. You will still go into the cardinal ordinances. Okay, and I'm gonna show you what those are. All right. So he's gonna put them into our minds, into our hearts. Okay, meaning that um, now when you're in the truth, when you know it's Friday, let's just say, let's just say for example, it's Friday. All right. You know when you wake up on Friday 
that when the sun goes down, you're gonna know it's a Sabbath because it's in your heart, it's in your mind. You already know, okay? This is what's going on. This is the new covenant. If this is dwelling in you, as far as the Holy Spirit, you are actually walking in the new covenant, okay? All right, so now let's go to the old covenant. Let's go to the old covenant and see what they had to do. Let's go to Numbers chapter 15. Numbers chapter 15. All right, Numbers chapter 15. This is what they had to do in the old covenant, okay? And you can still do it. You can still keep your heritage. But this was something that they had to do to remind them. All right. So now this is Numbers chapter 15 and verse. I'm going to start at verse 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation and that they put upon the fringe of the borders of the ribbon of blue, okay? So they would put fringes on and the borders would be blue, okay? I'm gonna give you an example. It's like, I don't know if you can see. Border of blue, fringes, okay? That's how, that's how they would do it, all right? But of course they have a garment, not a shirt. But, you know, just, just do it as best you can. All right, verse 39, and it reads, and it shall be unto you for, for a fringe that ye may look upon it. That's the key thing, that you may look upon it. That's why it was made, that you may look upon it, right? And remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring, that ye may remember and do all the commandments and be holy unto your God. All right, so that was one of the purposes of the friends. So you can look at it and remember all the commandments. That was in the Old Testament, okay? But now in the New Testament, the, the Lord is putting it in our hearts and our minds. So we don't have to look at it no more. It's gonna be already in us, meaning that the Holy Spirit will remind us of, of keeping the Sabbath day. Reminding us when you, go into, when you go into the store and you see something you want and the Holy Spirit gonna say, do not steal, right? Or if you go to your brother's house and you see he has a nice car, the Holy Spirit's gonna say, thou shalt not covet. So now you ain't got to look at your fringe and it was going to remind you that happened in the old covenant. But you can wear your fringes because it's a part of your heritage. Okay? The new covenant is here to remind you uh, of the law. Okay? The Holy Spirit will remind you of the law. All right? Those are examples of how the Holy Spirit reminds me of the law. All right? <clears throat> You know, remembering the Sabbath day. Wake up on Friday morning, bam, Holy Spirit time, oh, the day's the Sabbath. Okay? Or a couple of weeks is going to be the Passover. The Holy Spirit going to tell you that. Okay? This is the new covenant. All right? So now, let's go to Matthew chapter 23 and verse 5. Let's, let's see what Yeshia said. <clears throat> let's see what Yeshia said. Matthews 3rd, 23 and 5, okay? Uh, I'll start at verse 3. It says, All therefore whatsoever they bid you, observe that observe and do, but do not after their works, for they say and do not. Okay, so Christ is giving us a warning of the Pharisees. You know, learn from them, but don't do as they do, Okay? Don't do as they do, because they're some hypocrites. All right? Christ is warning us. I'm going to jump to verse 5. This is what they do. But all their works they do for to see, to be seen of men. So all their works they do is to be seen of men. All right? And it says, 
They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Okay, meaning that they would make fringes so everybody could see and everybody could, you know, basically worship them. This is what the Pharisees used to do. Okay, all right, because they started uh, worship their own creation, which was the fringe, so when everybody can embrace it, but not letting them embrace their spirit that's inside of them instead of the fringe. Okay. That's what you're really supposed to do. You got to let the people embrace your spirit. And then, you know, the, then, then comes the fringe and then comes the garment. All right. You want people to know that you have a good spirit. All right. So now let's go to verse 23. I mean, uh, chapter 20, 20, the same chapter. We're going to go to verse 25. And it reads, it says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye make clean the outside of the cup and the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Okay, talking about the outer appearance. Okay, they look good. They had all the garments down. They had everything. You know, it's just like today when you go into a Catholic church, Okay, or, you know, uh, yeah, Catholic, I'll say Catholic Church because they wear garments and all that stuff. And, you know, they try to look all holy or whatever, you know, but inside they're, they're, they're empty. Okay, they're full of extortion and excess. Excuse me. Verse 26, it says, uh, thou blind Pharisees, clean first that which is within the cup and platter that the outside of them may be clean also. Okay, so that's one of the keys. Clean the inside, and then the outside gonna look clean. People are gonna see it. People are gonna see through, you know, through the inside of, of you, they are gonna see the outer side of you. Verse 27, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto white sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead man's bones and of all uncleanness. Okay, so obviously they didn't have the Holy Spirit. They weren't working in the new covenant. The Holy Spirit wasn't dealing with them. Yeah, they had the outer appearance down. They had it down to the T, but the Holy Spirit wasn't there. The Holy Spirit wasn't correcting them. The Holy Spirit wasn't telling them they weren't being hypocrites. That's why Yeshia had to tell them. Okay, so this is going into the new covenant when the Holy Spirit tells you. So if the Holy Spirit is telling you to do something, you listen. Okay, because she's correcting you. She's telling you going this way to go that way. Okay, I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. <clears throat> let's go to, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. This is an example. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're going to read 31. This is, a, this is an example of the Holy Spirit. Okay. The new covenant correcting with the law. All right. This is 1 Corinthians 11 and 31. And it says, For if we would judge ourselves, we should be, we should not be judged. Okay, so if we judge ourselves, meaning that you examine yourself, you shall not be judged. That's the first thing that we have to uh, let the Holy Spirit do. Okay, verse 23, it says, but when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord. So when the Holy Spirit judges your walk, you're being chastised by the Lord. He's fixing you. Okay, this is the new covenant. Like I said, you could be going to the store and you may have a thought of, you know, I want this. And you might have a thought of stealing and the Lord says, brings the Holy Spirit and says, no, thou shalt not steal. That's how it works. All right. <clears throat> so it says, let me read that one more time, 32. But when we are judged, meaning judged of yourself by the Holy Spirit, we are chastised of the Lord. We are chastised of the Lord. 
meaning the Lord is correcting us, that we should not be condemned with the world, that we may not be condemned with the world. The Holy Spirit, the new covenant is dealing with you, okay? The new covenant is, the Holy Spirit in the new covenant is trying to fix you. Pay attention. This is an example. The Lord is chastising you. If you feel chastisement in your life and you're trying to walk right and you don't know what's going on, you're like, man, what is going on? Am I, am I, am I walking right? No, you're just getting chastised. The Lord is just trying to fix you. You may, you know, you may be uh, <clears throat> facing court. You may be getting accused by the by the system in a certain way. But the Lord is just trying to fix you. The Lord will fix you. And then you will reap the benefits at the end of the day. Okay, this is a part of the new covenant. All right? So now, <clears throat> now, um, let's go to John. This also came with the new covenant. Let's go to John. This is a this is actually a scripture that a lot of Christians misinterpret, okay? Because they don't know the Old Testament. So let's go to John chapter 1 and verse 17. John chapter 1 and verse 17. John chapter 1 and verse 17. Many Christians love to go to this scripture. They don't have no understanding. Okay? <clears throat> this is John chapter 1 and verse 17. It says, For the law was given by Moses. Okay, the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. The law was, the, the law was given by Moses, right? But grace and truth came by, I'm going to just read it as it is, Jesus Christ. All right? Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. This is what a Christian would hit you with. See, you have to keep the, the law, right? But not understanding what truth is. All right, so we're gonna get a precept to understand what truth is. Let's go to Psalms 119 and 142. Psalms 119 and 142. You can go ahead and write this in your Bible right by that verse. This is a precept. Psalms 119 and verse 142. Psalms 119 and 142, and it reads, Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law, and thy law is the truth. And thy law is the truth. So in the Old Testament, it's telling you that the law represents truth. Okay, so this is what they this is what the disciples knew. Because they read the Old Testament. Okay, so now with that understanding, now we know what law truth actually means. It means law. <coughs> Excuse me. It says, I'm going to read that one more time. John chapter 1, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and law, because we know we just read Psalms 119 and 142 that the law is the truth. So I'm just using the law, which should go here, okay? Because it represents truth. I'm going to read it one more time. But grace and truth. Are, but grace and law came by Jesus Christ. Okay, precept must be upon precept. So this is how you understand the word truth is. Truth represents law. So grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, meaning that you have time to repent. You have grace to repent. Because in the Old Testament, right, you would die. Right then and there. Let me, let, me, let me show you guys. Okay. So grace and law came by Jesus Christ. All right. Now let's go. Let's get an example. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. And verse 28. And it's and it reads. He that despises Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. All right, so that's the difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. 
by coming into the new covenant, right? You have repentance. You have forgiveness. Okay, this is what's different. You have time to correct yourself, to fix yourself. But in the Old Testament, okay, if you was in the Old Testament days, you would probably be walking home and you probably see a stack of bricks right, right next to your house. And you would look at it and be like, someone got stoned, right? That's what would happen. You would die under two or three witnesses without mercy. That's the difference, okay? So stay in the new, stay in the new covenant under Christ, all right? It's way better, okay? <clears throat> so now, <clears throat> let's keep going. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's keep going. We're going to the, we're, we're dealing with the Old Testament to the New Testament, or to the new, new Covenant. The Old Covenant to the New Covenant. What is the difference? All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And we're going to read, we're starting at verse 1. It says, do we begin again to commend ourselves? Question mark. Or need we, as some other epistles of condemnation to you, or letters of commendation from you? Verse 2. Ye are our epistles written in our hearts, known and read of all men. Okay, this is the people that uh, that Paul was teaching. He's saying, man, you, are, you, you, you are our epistles, you know, written, <clears throat> written in our hearts. Okay, verse three. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles of Christ, ministered by us, written not in ink, but with the spirit of the living God. There goes the new covenant. The spirit of the living God. Meaning that the Holy Spirit is dealing with you. Okay? Not in tables of stone. So it's not going to be in tables of stone no more. That was the Old Testament. That was the Old Covenant. Because they would have to get the old stones and put them in the Ark of the Covenant. And then they would have to, you know, get them out and read them. Nah. That's the old covenant. All right. <clears throat> Not in tables of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. New covenant. Hebrews 8 and 10. Okay. Hebrews 8 and 10. Let's go there real quick. Hebrews 8 and 10. Hebrews 8, 8 and 10. It says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them in their hearts. There you go. Paul's talking about the new covenant. Okay, he wasn't teaching them with tables of stone. He was teaching them with the spirit of God. Okay, he was teaching them how to walk in the spirit. Okay, because we didn't need that no more. We stepped into the new covenant and the new covenant, Yeshua is going to put it in our hearts and correct us. That's how you know you have the Holy Spirit. All right. <clears throat> All right. Verse four. And it reads, and such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves. So Paul's like, man, we ain't thinking nothing of our, we didn't do the work. The Holy Spirit did it. We're just trying to direct them in the, in the path. That's what Paul's saying. The Holy Spirit did the work. We're just, just, you know, we're just, we're just ministers of the Lord. All right. And it reads, <clears throat> Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficient is our sufficiency is of God. Six, who also has made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, right? But of the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit. For the letter killeth, 
We just read in Hebrews 10 and 28. That's what Moses was bringing. He was bringing, you was, you was, you was stoned without mercy. We don't live like that no more, right? But the spirit giveth life. The Holy Spirit, when it dwells in you, it gives you life. It corrects you, tells you which way to go. Correction comes, okay? Those that ain't spiritual won't understand that, all right? Verse seven, but if the man, <clears throat> manifest, excuse me, but if the ministration of death written and engraved in stones was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses for the glory of his continents, which glory was to be done away with, or was to be done away. Okay, there was nothing, it was, it was glory at one time, but they broke it. They broke the covenant, meaning it didn't work. Verse eight, how shall not the man ministration of the spirit be rather glorious okay i'm gonna jump to verse i'm gonna jump to verse 13 actually verse 12 seeing then that we have such hope we use great plainness of speech and not as moses which put a veil over his face that the children of israel could not steadfastly steadily Look to the ends of the of that which is abolished. All right, pay attention to this verse. But their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So that veil is still there over their minds when it's supposed to be the law in their minds which is the New Testament, all right? Verse 15, but even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart, meaning that the Holy Spirit ain't there, okay? They're still caught up in carnal ordinances, those ordinances. They still wanna sacrifice. They still wanna stone people, okay? Verse 15, but even unto this day, excuse me, verse 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. So once you come to the new covenant, that veil that's over your heart, if you follow in the Old Testament only, and if you decide to come to the Lord, that veil is going to be taken away over your heart. And the new covenant is going to enter in, which is the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit of correction. <clears throat> now the Lord, verse 17, now the Lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, okay? There is liberty. All right, let me just get a precept to help you understand what that means. Let's go to Deuteronomy uh, 30 and 19. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. And it reads, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. So there you go, liberty, okay? The most Yeshua is giving you liberty to choose life or death, okay? You're not, you're not gonna die if you don't choose life no more. You're not going to get stoned. Okay? You you might live in wickedness, but you're not going to get stoned just yet. That's when you go meet the Father. That's when you will get judged. But the but Yeshua, he's giving you all this time to come back to him. Okay? He's giving you all this time. This is the new covenant to receive the new covenant because the new covenant has liberty to for you to get it right. But if you choose to just live in darkness, then that's, that's your life. You're not gonna get stoned by anybody, all right? But you're gonna have liberty to choose, okay? Verse 18, but we all with open face 
beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. So we're changed once we enter this new covenant with the Holy Spirit. If we decide to accept it, we can't live in the old covenant no more, y'all. Yes, we have to keep the laws, okay? Yes, you can choose, okay, to uh, keep the fringes, the garment. But that that's not what's well, that's not the new covenant no more. That's the uh, that's not the uh, yeah exactly that's not the new covenant no more. Okay, because we use the friends to look at it and to remember the commandments. Now the new covenant says that it's going to be in our hearts and our minds to remember the commandments. You can put the fringes on, you can put the garment on, but don't let it overshadow the spirit that's within you. Keep your heritage, yes. Okay. Cause that's what we're gonna be doing, all right? Okay, um, also, let's go to a couple more verses. I want to explain. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2 and 15. Ephesians chapter 2 and 15. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 15. Okay, and it reads This is about Yeshua when he made that sacrifice, all right. It says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twine one new man, so maketh peace. Okay, so when Yeshia, when he died on the cross, okay, or the tree, whatever, he abolished the carnal ordinances. Okay, so you may ask, what are carnal ordinances? I'm going to show you right now. Let's go to, uh, give me an example. Let's go to Leviticus. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 7. And I'm going to read 1 through 5. This is a carnal ordinance, which he abolished. It says, likewise, this is the law of trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they killed and burnt offering." shall they kill the trespass offering and the blood thereof shall he sprinkle around about upon the altar. Okay. And this is a carnal ordinance and he shall offer it of it all the fat thereof and wrap and the fat that covereth the inward parts and the two kidneys and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks and the calf, that is above the liver with the kidneys, it shall be, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is a trespass offering. Okay, so this is an example of a trespass offering which they would have to do in the old covenant. These are cardinal ordinances which he abolished. We don't have to do that no more. Okay, we accept the blood of the lamb and now we can. <clears throat> when we acknowledge our sins, we could come before Yeshua and he could speak to the Father for us now. That's the difference. All right. So now let's go to another one. Let's go to Hebrews 9 and 10. It's the last scripture. Hebrews 9 and verse 10. Hebrews 9. Hebrews. Hebrews 9 and 10. And it reads. Okay, this is the this is also cardinal ornaments. It says, which stood only in meats. Remember, we were reading about meats, about the flank and the, you know, the kidneys and all that, what they had to do for the trespass offering. And drinks and diverse washing and cardinal ornaments imputed on them until the time of reformation, excuse me. Verse 11, but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hand, <clears throat> hands, that is to say, not by this building. So I'm gonna give you guys some advice right now. <clears throat> if you are watching a camp, a particular camp, 
and they're and they're saying I'm high priest such and such run run away from that camp because they still in the Old Testament if someone's claiming they're the high priest okay run from that camp do not listen to them because there's only one high priest and that high priest is the Christ or Yeshua or Yeshua or Yahweh Shai, whatever you want to call him. He is the high priest. Okay? Verse 12. It says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, excuse me, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of any heifer sprinkled the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God purge our conscience from dead works to serve the living God there you go purge your conscience from dead works Meaning that the Holy Spirit is going to... See, they use the word conscience right there. That's the Holy Spirit. That's what's going to fix you. That's what's going to keep you from dead works. Dead works is the, the carnal ordinances. The Old Testament. Okay? So, I pray and I hope that the Holy Spirit will enter into your life. That the Holy Spirit, that you will let the Holy Spirit come into your life, which is the new covenant. And the, new, and the Holy Spirit will remind you of the laws to keep. Okay? So I want to give all praises to the Most High Ahaya, Bahashim Yeshaya, Rewakwadash. So be it.